ان الحمد لله رب العالمين واصلي واسلم على مبعوث العالمين وعلى اله واصحابه واهل البيت اجمعين وبعد ربنا يسر ولا تؤثر وتم بالخير وبك نستعين يا فتاح قال الله تبارك وتعالى في القران الكريم بعد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم ومن اياته ان خلق لكم ازواجا لتسكنوا اليها الى اخر الايه صدق الله العظيم we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we beg him to protect us and protect our hearts and help us to have humble tongues and help us to be humble and bless us with eyes that have forgotten how to cry the continuation of our khutbah we did last week is about the fitna the trials before the last day and i stopped at one point wa minha fitnatu ar-rajul fi ahlihi wa malihi and among the signs are the one that deals or affects the entire family structure. And I have actually started to explain some of the things that actually affect the family structure. Bickering, quarreling, nagging, swell mouth. Saying to your spouse, I can't stand you. I don't think this marriage will work. And the list go on. The arguments. From there I explain the ayah of the Holy Quran that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions with regards to the home. And we know for a fact that our wives are the ones who are responsible not only to clean the home but also to maintain that home that we see comfort in after a hard day work. I said also that the same home that you and I expect joy and happiness as a husband if you know for a fact that after a hard day work you are to go home to reach a wife that nags at you that embarrasses you that belittles you then without any doubt you will delay your going to your home Because you don't want to go and experience something that you are not accustomed to while you're working. Because you're a boss while you're working. But now when you go home, your wife, she makes you feel insignificant because of the things that she say to you. I mentioned at the end of my khutbah a story about Abdullah bin Rawah who had his head in the lap of his wife and tears were trickling down his face and his wife she was looking at him and she saw him crying and she began to cry and while the tears were falling from her face dropping on his face he asked her, why are you crying? And she said, The reason why I am crying, it is because 
I see you crying. That's the reason why I began to cry. Do you know I am crying? No, I don't know. But you are crying for a genuine reason. He said, yes. And the reason is, crossing the Pulsi route on the day of Yom al Qiyamah came to mind. And when he came to mind, I began to cry because I don't know if I will be able to cross the Pulsi route. One of the second fitna, the second trial, something today that is affecting every one of us. You may not be a victim, and if you are not, then thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the fitna today that ex exists in our homes also, that there is no happiness in that home, there is no joy in that home. There is not a hospitable environment for us. You have a fake smile between the husband and wife. They post photographs on their birthday and anniversary and they are hugging, they are kissing each other. But inside tells a different story. And many of you probably you would have seen that and you know the couples who actually take these photos and put it up on Facebook for everyone to see it's a happy occasion. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us believe in brothers and believe in sisters that whatever we are going through it's not about us hiding this from anyone but it's important also that each and every one of us, we try our best that you and I not only smile when we're taking out photos, but also we should try our best to smile also with other, on other occasions also in our life. We today are living in an environment that there is no love. And if I'm to ask you, what is the word today for your success, for your happiness? I asked this to, this to the students last night and they all looked at me. My question to them, tell me the word, and that's the key word, that will bring you all the joy that you want in your life. And they looked at me and they began to tell me this word, that word. I said, please stop. There are four letters. I'll make it short. And they were still looking at me. And I said, it's love. L-O-V-E. That is it. We are living today in a world that there is no love. There is no love between the husband and the spouse. If there is love, then there is respect. We see in society today what happens. Some of the things that is affecting the real and the true love, the true love and is a result of us giving what we consider to be fake love to the one that deserves our love is simply because of something that is normal in our society and it starts sometimes at a very young age. We begin to live a fake relationship. with a person that is not real, that is fake also. It is normal today in society for a girl to have a boyfriend and a boy to have a girlfriend. It is normal today in our society to change your gender. It is normal in our society today to support the gay movement. It is normal today in our society to smoke drugs and also consume alcohol. It is normal today in our society to have more than one sex partners. It is normal today to see a woman walking around naked on the street. When believing brothers and believing sisters, 
you and I as Muslims understand that we cannot fit in this type of society because we begin to live that fake life at a very young age. Just imagine this. A woman believe that to empower her, it is for her to dress half naked and to expose her body. A woman today believe that empowerment is about having a tattoo on her leg, on her arms, on her neck. And a brother also happens to believe the same and consider this to be empowerment. The brother believe also empowerment is for him to look like a female and wear an earring. We cannot live in a society with people who think like this. Then you grow up now with all these practices in the normal life that you live as a young person growing up. And then you're looking for a husband, you're looking for a wife, now to start a life. The young girl, she messed up, she goes to university. And she is sleeping with one man after the next. And the brother also is doing the same. He has one woman, two women. And when they're about to get married, they come to the sheikh or to whosoever is looking for a wife for them. And they want a beautiful, a pious woman who is performing her salah. She must come from a decent family. Her character must not be questionable when his character is questionable. Allah, He loves the young people. But He loves them when they practice their religion. Because the sacrifice you have to make today in our society for you to be on deen, that is, you have to make not only sacrifice to protect your honor and your dignity as a young Muslim, but also you have to be steadfast. Yes. That you have to live under confinements, restriction, indeed. You think it's easy today for a young man to stay away from the evil of this society? Those older folks, you live in a time that was better, where the people were more cultured, and there were much more morality during that time than the time of today. If I'm to ask you this question, and this question actually it would have been a question to the sisters, because when we speak about the fitna, we speak about the fitna today that is affecting every young and every old. If I'm to ask a sister, what is the greatest need of a man? Now brothers, you're looking at me. Now look at me and pay attention. You've probably never heard this before. What do you need as a man? And what is your greatest need as a man? Let me say as a husband. Your greatest need as a husband, it is not food because you know what? You can go to Hilal and you can go to Popeyes and you can buy yourself lunch, yes or no? You can buy yourself dinner, yes or no? You can go to Jerry's Walk and you can go and buy dinner tonight. What is the greatest need of a man? Is it sex? You know today what happened in our society, a man, he can pay for sex. which is haram. You think today the greatest thing that a man needs is someone to wash his clothing? No. That brother can go to the dry cleaners and get his clothes clean. The greatest need of a man today is respect. And most marriages today are broken because of not having respect for each other in their relationship. And now listen to me now. If you are convinced by a woman, you are the best option that she have. And you know, we have a lot of, mashallah, you know, brothers there. And I said this in my last khutbah sometimes, you see, a brother, he is not too good looking, but he has the most beautiful wife. Yeah, 
And you know the reason why? You know, sometimes the brother will tell a woman that, you know what, if I am to marry you, man, I'm going to give you my Scotia bank account and you can go and buy what you want. And the man is brokes, brokes. The job that he's wearing on, he borrowed from his brother. And he sucks as his father sucks. And the underwear that he's wearing is his brother one. But yet still, he wants to promise this beautiful woman that if you are to marry me, then I will give you my bank card so you can go to Scotia and you can go and travel and use my card. He never seen one before. Which card is he talking about? The one that you're playing? If you are to, to convince a woman that you are the best option by what? By jumping through hoops. And jumping through hoops mean it's a word that is used to mean I'm ready to go through anything to make you a happy woman. Any difficulty, any hardship. Even I have to screw up in this relationship. I'm going to buy you what you want. I'm going to give you what you want. What you want to wear. And this man, he begs her and he tells her, you know, sometimes we, you know... <laughs> We are good, like we say in our language, this man is a good swar man, or he's a good sewer, mashallah, he can sewer good. See, brother Mafia again laughing this week. You know what I'm talking about? That no, well, she is not the one for you. Why? Because this sister that you sewer, and you're able to convince her that you are the best option, Mapi, she actually thinks that you are one just like the many others who came to her with the same words to tell her and to convince her that they will do all of this for her. Now she has an option to, ex uh, to accept the one that say bank card, bank account, card, house and land. You, conv you now convince her that financially you will support her. That relationship you actually sign up on a life. Listen to me very carefully. You actually when you say I am ready. You am, I am the only option of the girl. Say yes I am ready to you. What you actually do when you get married to that woman. You sign up on a life to work over time to please this woman. Because a woman sometimes she believes that a man's job it is to please her. A man's job is to make me happy. A man's job it is to care for me. A man's job it is to protect me. When it's supposed to be on the opposite. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he taught us the importance of pleasing your husband. And that will help you to create the hereafter. Many of us brothers, I know that, you can't even speak to your wife at home. Yes, I'm saying that. Worse that many of us, we cannot even speak to our own children. Yes, my wife, I give her a house and she gives me a home. And I expect that that home should be a home that is full of happiness. The wife gets angry sometimes that you know you are doing certain things or you're saying certain things in the house that she's upset about. And then the first thing the wife sometimes she say, you know what, I'm leaving you, I'm going back home. Like a man, he gets angry. The first thing he, th he thinks about is that you know, oh listen here man, I'm going to divorce you. My sisters, never leave your husband. Never ask for divorce. This is mentioned in the hadith. It brings the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for petty matters between you and your spouse. Don't do this. Even your husband is cheating. Maybe your husband is cheating because of your fault, because of some weakness that's inside of you. That's something that you need to do that you are not doing to him. And you need to find out the reason why he is doing it. If it is the brother needs someone to make dua for him, then you are the best option. If this brother, for example, he need love, then give him more love. 
If the brother, for example, he needs respect, give him respect. Listen to me now. You know, the same money that you give to your wife. If you were to give that to your mother, you'd be surprised to see how grateful your mother will be with you for what you give to her. I want to bring a beautiful story before you. And stories actually explains topics and subjects and matters and issues and simplify them for us to understand. If you are planning to get married or you are married, then listen. A man and his wife, they were traveling to a zoo. While they were in that zoo, they found a monkey who was passionately playing with his female friend. His wife, she looked at the monkey playing with his female friend and she said, what a romantic relationship. Allahu Akbar. Listen to this. What a romantic rela relationship. You know sometimes, and I said this in my last khutbah, brother, when you walk in with your wife, grab her, hold her, and hold her tight. She's yours. And just go to the sister hold, so you're walking with your husband, hold his hand. Be proud of this man, let him feel like he's a man. And I mentioned something last week, it just flipped to my head and I don't want to say it because I said it already last week. So the man said his, to his wife, when he see the male and the female monkeys, they were playing passionately. She said, what a romantic relationship. And as they continued to walk in the zoo, they found a lion and his lioness separated from each other. The silent lion sat in a corner as if the lion does not even exist. The wife of this brother, he asks him, his, that is her husband, do you see that? He said, what? He said, look, the lion, where the lioness is, he's sitting separate. They're not together like the monkeys. What a sad scene, no love. The husband said to the wife, come. There is a heap of stones here. I want you to pick one up for me. And I want you to throw it on the lioness. So the wife said, why? He said, go do exactly that I want you to do. So the wife, she went, she picked up that, uh, that stone that was lying on the ground and she threw it on the lioness. And when she threw it on the lioness, what happened? The lion jumped up and ran to defend the lioness. And then the husband brought her now to the cage where the monkeys are. And he said to her, take another stone from here. And I want you to throw it on the monkey, the, fe the male, not a female. And when that brother, his wife threw the stone on the, on the male monkey, he ran to save his life and left the female monkey that he was in love with. He abandoned the female friend to safety of his own life. Then the husband looked at the wife and he laughed. And he said, don't be deceived with what you see in some man as romance. Don't be deceived when you see some men, they look very romantic. 
Like you look at me, mashallah, you'll say, hey, this is a romantic maulana. You know, this man get words, right? Yeah? So don't be deceived. Don't be deceived by what you see in me. Sometimes it is deceiving. The appearance is deceiving. Because this man may be romantic from the outside, but he has an empty heart. And there are others, on the contrary, who show nothing, but their heart are full with love. And they are much more sincere. Unfortunately, today we have many men who are like monkeys out there. You listening to me? There are many men who are like monkeys. They abandon their wives. And I don't want to tell you the reason why. And there are few lines like Maulana Badruddin. I'm just saying that because I want this brother love. A man may not be, look romantic at all the time, but his heart is full of love. And that is the kind of person that we need today in society to help us to grow in our relationship. This is the fitna today that I'm talking about that is affecting the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that no one can fix except you as a husband. Only you can fix this problem that you are facing today in your relationship. One of the other things that we are taught about that will happen before the day of Yom al Qiyamah and one of the signs, that is the sign, and we are presently witnessing that sign today. And that sign, that sign is what? That sign it is, وَرَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِيَ اللَّهِ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى Help and protect each and every one of us that we do not become victim of that. It is the fitna today whereby, brothers and sisters, there is no happiness. There is no happiness. One I mentioned, there is no happiness in the home. And there is another one, brothers and sisters, where there is no happiness in the relationship. Subhanallah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us because this is one of the things today that, you know, when we, when we talk about it, we talk about it, and we talk about it in such a way that we hope, inshallah, that it helps to change us. The second, that fitna is, there will be no happiness. No hospital, no uh, home, no environment that you live in a hospitable, that would be a hospitable environment for us. Imam Bayyaki, he said, a time will come when a man will lose his iman. And why that man will lose his iman? And he will lose it because of his wife. He will lose it because of his family. He will lose it because of his children. This hadith is mentioned in Bayaki. The companions asked the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam how a man will lose his iman as a result of his wife and his family. How? Will that be possible? He said the man will become a victim of criticism of his family. He will become a slave to his family. So much so that this sister will want this a season to come when that season doesn't exist in that time. And I was saying this to my students last night. If I'm to tell you, make dua right now for winter to come when you have in summer clothes on. Will you be ready to face the winter? No, we will not be ready. If I ask you to go outside here and make dua for rain, but you don't have an umbrella and you don't have a rain coat, will you be ready for that season? No. Many of us today, we want to bring a season on in our life that is to make things happy that is not meant to happen, to happen at that time. Our spouse will tell us that you're working, but you're not bringing enough to maintain and to support the family. You need to provide more. And they will constantly criticize this husband. And it will reach a point. It will reach a point where it is do or die, hell or heed either. A brother sometimes he gives up. 
And they separate and say, listen man, you know what, sister, you're too expensive. I can't maintain you, I can't work to support you. This is one of the fitness today that we are facing in our relationship. This is a joke that I heard from South Africa that a brother, he was coming, passing with his vehicle in the morning at 2 o'clock and one brother, he was driving also on the highway in Johannesburg. And while he was driving, he saw his brother pass, he called him on the phone, he said, Hey, what are you doing at 2 a.m. in the morning so early? He said, What are you asking? He said, No, I just want to know, man, is something wrong? He said, No, nothing is wrong. He said, So what are you doing so, late, so early in the morning, 2 o'clock in the morning, you're on the road? With a brother that was driving, he actually had two wives. He said, I'm coming from one Bayan and I'm going to another Bayan. For those of you understanding, <laughs> see the senior brother is laughing. It means I came from one lecture and I'm going to another lecture. So I'm well prepared. By the time I read just she half sleep, she got this So I'm going 2 a.m. to listen to the next lecture. By the time I reach, she'll be sleeping. This is the fitness today that we are facing. That a brother sometimes he, because of mental pressure that he's going through, this brother has to go and earn to, to give to his wife money from haram sources just to protect their marriages. You have to buy a car by the end of this year. You have to buy a house by the end of this year. This brother, he's working only for this amount of money. And then the brother, he goes and he borrows from the bank to buy a house and to buy a car. Another brother has to struggle now to pay for the car and also to pay for the house lot that he bought and the house that he's building. You bring the season on at a time, the brother he just out of work, he's earning a hundred thousand dollars a month. No promotion for him. But you could wait for another six months or a year for him to get a promotion where he can make a little extra dollar or another job. You bring in a season on this brother now, he's making a hundred thousand dollars, but from that fifty thousand dollars has to go and play, pay installment. This is the fitness today that many men are going through, and they are working tirelessly to pay. Even they dig a hole to fill a hole and they keep boring. The brother reached a stage where in life where he began to succumb to the pressure just to sustain this relationship that he's in. And sometimes the brother eventually end up doing unlawful business. An unlawful business where we get unlawful wealth. And I know some of the brothers, I can remember passing not far. You see across here, juice power? You know juice power? Brother, you pass there every day. But I never see you in that line. But I saw one very good brother, mashallah, who prays his five walks salah. He has had an umbrella covering his face one side. But you know, you can umbrella is not a wrong thing. It's not like a football. You put an arm on your head and you get two hold your watch and shoot to go and buy your lato. You know what I'm talking about. So the other side, he was not able to manage to cover. So you could see him on the other side. And he was standing in queue and he was going covering, hiding, so that he can go and buy his lato. I know this brother. I know he works. I know this brother earn. And I know some of the things that this brother, he was going through in life. But what I'm seeing, when I see this brother in that line going to buy a lato, I don't understand. Lato? It's <laughs> something that you know what you want to get in something that is haram to earn that wealth, you know. Well, I mean, but anyway, to buy lato, it is haram. Please, brother, don't gamble. This is haram. I'm going through this pressure today, and you are going through this pressure today with a wife, subhanallah, that wants to drag us in a relationship where you and I displease Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are victims of each of these fitna brothers and sisters. A brother, for example, you see, brother Norman McLean is driving a Lexus. How come you get a Lexus? 
And he's a friend of Uncle Yasin. And they're at the same age, but how come he get a Lexus? They are doing the same type of job. So you tell Brother McLean, you say, you say, you tell your wife, your wife tells you, hey, you see, Brother McLean, watch he, he buy a Lexus for you, wife. I want the same too. Why you can't buy one for me to go and find out for me where you buy them from? Or ask your wife. I didn't mention to you once in my hook, but that you know what? <laughs> Courts, you can go and buy a sofa. And there was one person who went and buy a sofa. And when he paid his first, you know, you don't have to pay, no down payment. They say one dollar. And you, you know, and then you have to let you pay your installment. So what he did was he bought the chairs, put it in his the sofas, put it in his house, and then he called a carpenter and he tell the carpenter, make the door a little smaller. Put in all the chairs first, and then he said, so the carpenter came, well, you pay him a little 10,000, the guy just pulled the thing, cut the door a little smaller, you know. So now, he and his wife can barely go through. And he stopped paying the installment at the end of the month, and when courts decide to come and take back the full furniture, he said, anytime you have broke me house, I'm taking you out to court. Court said, uh, left the chair right there. Have a nice day, sir. And you know where this was coming from? His wife. She was going from one stage to the next, and she said, I don't think, hold on, he's the brother busy working, he's on the wharf, and he's empty in container. He comes on two o'clock in the night, the brother is heading for Suriname, vehicle broke down, he had any engine, and he's looking after something that he don't know. And the brother comes, he's tired, and she just said, I'm so old, I think, mm, what should I do next to him? What should I get him to do? Who should he talk to now? And the brother, yeah, 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 man. Where is the piety in a woman like this? Don't complain to anyone with what you're going to use your sorrow and show that at the beginning of your marriage that you find someone who can support you during crisis of difficulties, hardships. When it comes, the wife is there that you can sit and talk to your wife. When you talk to your wife today, sometimes she gets angry when you talk to her. That's the reason why one brother, you know, he used to tell his the girl before he married, he said, Darling, sweetie, you is all that I have. So he was swearing her, right? And he was telling her that you is all that I have. So when they get married, he took her to the house he was living in. And lo and behold, somebody came and a letter was presented from the high court to vacate the house because it had it, the house was belongs to his uncle. Here the wife, I thought it was your house. He said, no darling, we have to pack up and leave this afternoon because police will come and put all the little clothes or whatever we canary and pot outside. Let me find a place to go. Can we go to your mother's house? But you don't tell me you get house alone. I said, yes. I didn't tell you that. What I tell you that you is all that I get, nothing else. But you was not listening to me. You were so much in love with me. <laughs> but you say, Alhubu yu'ma wa yasub. Love, it makes you blind, dumb, and deaf. Yes or no? I don't want to hear nobody's voice except this woman's voice. I don't want to see no other woman's face except this woman's face. Yeah. This is a big problem that we have today. That's the reason why Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he outlined some guidelines for us to follow when it comes for you to choose that woman in your life. Brothers and sisters, we cannot complete the topic again today. We will continue inshallah. Bi'ithnillah uh, inshallah next week. Meaning that we will have Mapi here again next week because this is one of the topics I know that he's very much interested in. And I hope the brother brothers also join us for next week khutbah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help each and every one of us, inshallah, that we are able to overcome these difficulties and hardships in our relationship so that we can have a loving home and we can care for our spouses. We can respect them and we can put Islam, deen in front and Allah's pleasure in front in our relationship so that we will earn Allah's reward in our relationship, insha'Allah.